on three things, capacity building, advocacy, and decide for donor funding. So most of our efforts were concentrated on those three activities. They said with their 2011 annual activity and financial report, dictated by their very purpose of establishment in 2007, their mandate has been to pervert all negative practices that undermines a competitive free market economic system, which over the years have landed local participants of the informal sector out of business. Competition law enforcement is not easy business. It is simply, in very simple terms, the regulation of human behavior and conduct in the marketplace. It requires skill, it requires dexterity, but above all, it requires resources. At some point, we are eliminated from the world go by international competitive bidding. And these are loans or these are grants that come to the Gambia in the interest of the Gambian people. If it's in the form of loans, we are paying, our sons will be paying, our grandsons will be paying. So we only feel that it is very, very important that we try to maintain as much of those resources locally. But at the same time, capacity and quality is a must. The intricate link of their mandate with need for advocacy and enforcement have been a challenge for the Competition Commission, seeking for additional budgetary allocation to implement their mandate from parliamentarians. As procedure and practice continues at the Assembly, public institutions and enterprises are advised to be accountable. Babakar Kamara, GRTS. Administrational atrocities, anomalies, and lawlessness were the words used by Principal Magistrate Taiwo Alakpe to describe the mismanagement and unprincipled conduct of the UTG's Vice Chancellor, Professor Mohamed Ka, as he rendered judgment on the case of false information against Gumbo Ture at the Banjul Magistrate's Court. Uh, Ibrahim Ajata was listening to Principal Magistrate Alakbe when he delivered judgment on this is his report. It's an intricate web of allegations layered under what was described as a complex tangle of evidence and exhibits by the presiding magistrate. But in conclusion, the court acquitted and discharged Gumbo Ture of the single charge of false information leveled against him. Nine witnesses testified for prosecution who tendered a host of documents in addition to proof that the former university lecturer made false allegations against the vice chancellor of the UTG in a petition addressed to the office of the president. Ture had denied the charges and gave sworn evidence along with two witnesses he called in his defense, which succeeded in admitting a critical investigative report by the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. At the end of testimonies, both parties filed and exchanged briefs with prosecution urging the court to convict, while the defense asked for an obliteration of the charges for want of evidence. A wealth of facts, contentions, and exhibits emerged during a trial, which saw the conviction of a newspaper publisher who was later fined by the court for analyzing the defense counsel's cross-examination of prosecution star witness. Principal Magistrate Alagbe didn't waste much time when he sat down to deliver his verdict on the case. After a succinct outline of the evidence in totality, the presiding magistrate resolved almost all issues in favor of the defense from what he illustrated as the flagrantly unlawful suspension and termination of the accused person's service, the UTG's non-compliance with the Gambia Public Procurement Authority, admitted reports indicating undue processes effected in matters of expenses and contracts whose fiscal routes were never documented or properly determined, the gross expenditures and salary paid to the vice chancellor to the dishonest and biased nature of appointments, even the vice chancellor's academic credibility was vastly questioned by the court as it went on to list down the maze of inconsistencies in this embryonic institution which Ture attempted to bring to the fore. While commending the exemplary attitude displayed by Gumbo Ture in sacrificing his liberty for the betterment of the university, Magistrate Alagbe further underlined the vital nature of the investigative report by the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, which he said immensely buttresses the unlawful determination of Dr. Ture's employment after conveying his grievances about the UTG's maladministration by the Vice Chancellor. Dr. Ture was consequently acquitted and discharged by the presiding magistrate to a deafening upload by onlookers, friends, and relatives. Ibrahim Ojata, GRTS. The 5th of October is designated the World Over as World Teachers Day. The day which is set aside by UNESCO is meant to pay homage and appreciate the significant contributions made by teachers towards education and development. Samuel Barr takes a closer look at this year's celebration, which is anchored on the team Take a Stand for Teachers.
Celebrated annually on October 5th, World Teachers Day is an opportunity for governments, parents, students, and activists to honor and show gratitude to educators for their invaluable contributions to the advancement of education across the globe. Tribute will be paid to the teaching profession and its unique role in the socio-economic and intellectual rebuilding of communities in which we all live and work. Fellow Gambians, I therefore address this nation tonight in order to acknowledge the worth of our nation's teachers, to recognize and applaud the important work they do. These teachers are the representatives of stability, order, and continuity, and do not flinch in the face of adversity. Their commitment to excellence in classroom situations and their overwhelming contributions to the achievement of students no doubt sets them as main pillars of a sound and progressive society as they continue to bear the weight and responsibility of educating generations of young people. I am convinced that teachers in this country, just like in other countries, are engaged in a great national mission for our generation of young people. This mission aims to realize the full potential of each young person through a system of education that lays a solid foundation for responsible citizenship. Indeed, the teacher requires support to accomplish this mission. This year's celebration centered on the theme Take a Stand for Teachers illustrates their daunting task as dynamic forces in educational institutions and a clarion call for all stakeholders to acknowledge them as they continue to transform the lives of learners. The teacher is believed to be the yardstick for measuring the achievements and aspirations of a nation. They know they carry our heritage and future on their soldiers and strive for better educational service delivery. As we celebrate this day, let us remember how our teachers managed to endure the immense difficulties of the past and also think of the enormous challenges that lie ahead in order to gain the broadest possible perspective of their role as teachers. The government of the day is fully aware of the immense difficulties that teachers have endured in the past, and hence the introduction of life-changing interventions to better their lives. It is for this reason, among others, that the government of the Gambia, under the dynamic leadership of His Excellency, the President of the Republic, Chair Professor Al-Haji Dr. Yahya A.J.J. Jami, values the contribution of teachers and calls on them to continue giving their very best for the development of our dear motherland. By the same token, the teachers will continue to bear testimony to the incremental advancement of their profession through the life-changing interventions currently being implemented in the education sector. As teachers across the globe observe this day, Hopes are high that they will continue to penetrate into the secret hearts of young people, giving their best for the development of our motherland. Samuel Ba, GRTS. You can monitor GRTS Radio Live on our website at www.grts.gm. That takes us to our first break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Somali forces backed by heavily armed Kenyan and African Union troops are expanding and strengthening their control of the port city of Kismayo. The strategic city was a stronghold of the militant Al-Shabaab group who withdrew in the face of attacks by African Union troops. Reports say the Al-Shabaab opened up the gates of the Kismayo central prisons, releasing prisoners upon their retreat from the city. The Somali army, backed by Kenyan and African Union troops, secured positions in Kismayo this week. They now control the most strategic points in this port city. Once under the control of the Shabaab, it was abandoned by the rebels on Saturday during a ground assault by Somali and Kenyan forces. The Shabaab retreated without a fight. The takeover is considered a key victory in the war against the Islamists. 
Acaba bak köle